Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to the channel today. I thought I might do this review on this TU 2021 model scooter. So we've got the Honda Forza 350 and the Yamaha X-Max 300. So they're both brand new scooters. The uh, Honda's done about 800 kilometres. The uh, X-Max has done around 200 kilometres. Uh, they're not one of the bikes or anything like that. Went out and bought them with my own money, so we've got a good honest review there on what it's like to own two scooters, current model, and my thoughts on that. So first off, we're going to have a look at the price, fit and finish, and features. Maybe not in that order, but we'll go through it. So once again, uh, I'm in Australia, so if you're going down to buy one of these bikes, and if you're lucky enough to strike it in stock, that'd be the hardest part at the moment, whether or not either bike's in stock. You could pick up the X-Max for around about $8,900 right away. Australian dollars, $8,900. And the uh, fours, uh, it's around 10000 right away. So apart from that, that, that's the price on both bikes and whether or not you're lucky enough to walk in and see one's a, a, a different story. So as far as that goes, uh, if you were down there and you bumped into one and one was on the floor, if you purchased either bike, you'd be really happy with it. So I've, like I said, ridden one 200, one 800 kilometres. So I've got a good idea roughly how they go because I've been on a lot of new bikes and you know I go through a few so I reckon if I can't get on the bike and pick if it's any good within uh, a ride well things are pretty bad and I shouldn't be buying bikes and I should be riding bikes and that's the way I'd look at it that way. Okay so we've knocked over the price now we're going to specs. There's not a great deal separating these bikes we've got two uh, bikes that weigh in, so example the Honda, it comes in 185 kilos in weight and the uh, X-Max 300 comes in 180. There's not a great deal of difference between them, if anything I think the X-Max feels just that sm a little bit smaller, it's had smaller when you're riding it. So I think the X-Max is more compact in that mind, so uh, I think you know, 185, 180, you know Nobody can really pick five kilos when they're on them. Uh, when you look at wheels, like uh, they both similar there too. The uh, both run 15 inch front, and a 14 inch rear. So they're pretty well leveled in that playing field there too. So uh, that bit aside, the only other thing that really separates them is sort of the engines. The Honda here. It's got roughly a 330cc motor, and our X-Max over there has got, um, I think, 286, something like that. So it's really misleading anyway, because they call that a 300, it's got 286, and they call this a 350, and it's got about 329. Now, the big question is, if you said to me now, is there any difference in power between both bikes? Yeah, I think there is. The Honda would really give this a burst and really knock over that Yamaha quite easy, I think, to 100 kilometres an hour because it's geared to you know really good torque from kickoff right to 100 k's. After that it's hard to say, but um, you know the Hondas, if you said to me, is there much difference between the power? I think there's a lot. So the next thing would be, uh, I think we're talking about fit and finish. My thoughts so far is just a, a quick look over both bikes in a little bit more detail. I would think the uh, Yamaha is a lot better put together than the Honda. When I bought my Honda I found it had a bit of a rattle in the screen and a bit of plastic rattle up here in the front end. And I thought it could have been, you know, uh, better. Now if you look at this Yamaha, they're, uh, they're actually assembled in Indonesia. And my thoughts are that it's assembled as good as what you'd got an old bike in the old days, assembled in Japan. So it's really well put together. Yamaha so I'm really happy how it's put together. The Honda's assembled in Thailand and I think it lives up to that side of it. While I'm at it we'll swing back to uh, features so if you pay 8900 for the Yamaha and you um, pay 10 grand if you want to jump to a Forza what do you get for it? Well what you actually get the most important thing if you're after a little bit of power and you want to pull hills better or you're in a hilly area is with the Honda you get for one you get the bigger motor which like I said even though in paper there's only two horsepower separating them out on the road not the case because I really enjoy riding Honda so that's one thing you get the uh, second thing you get is this pretty neat power windscreen 
which, you know, is pretty handy to have. But, you know, you could live without it if you had to and just put a, oh, whatever they call them, to sit up the top here and wind deflector. So that'd be the second thing. But more importantly, the other third one is with the Honda, you get two key fobs instead of one. Where the Yamaha only gives you one. Now, if you lose a Yamaha key fob, from what I've been told, you know, you've got to uh, take all this information to the dealer about what your model of bike is and all that. Then you'll have to order you a key. It'll cost you about $200 to have it, purchase it and have it reprogrammed. But you might be out of a key for a few months or several weeks because from what I believe others have said, getting a key fob spare for one of these is not an easy job. But with Honda you get two, so there's no drama there. You can keep one at home safe and the other one naturally on with you when you come out to get on the bike. But uh, on the other one, Yamaha definitely should have two. So once again, here's a bit of a look at the key fobs on our left here, the Honda. Like I said, you get two. And uh, back on the right there, you get the Yamaha, and that's what you get, just one. Now, I suppose it wouldn't be a fair test unless I give you an idea of the screen. So we've got the screen now in the low position. I'll press the button, up she goes. So if we look at it now, there she is up. A bit hard to reach this and... and there she goes down. What I find when I'm riding this bike is I usually like to have the screen, I put it up in the up position, fully up, then drop it down one inch and that does a pretty good job there. So uh, nothing I'll show you if you look at the Honda, it's got the best indicators. The reason being, there are a lot more from, I think, a safety point of view, like they sit up nice and high. The Yamaha's tucked down really low. I might kick the Yamaha over and we'll just have a quick look. So we'll put the indicators on both machines. Okay, we've got them on now. So if you look at it now, you've got the, the Honda here blinking away, nice high level, so if traffic's coming the other way, they've got a pretty good chance of seeing you. Down here, the Yamaha is tucked right down really low, similar to motorcycle, outright motorcycle style. So if we go back and look here, and you see both blinking away, I don't know, but the, uh, definitely the Honda's a lot brighter, so, uh, and easier to see too. So it just depends, you know, if you're around this way, it's a bit hard to see the uh, Yamaha, the X-Max indicators, but you have absolutely no trouble seeing the Hondas. On this side you see a little bit better, but it appears to me the uh, Honda would win on the indicator thing and it'd be a much safer bike to ride. Yeah, so if you look at the mirrors from the seated on the Honda, they're a nice looking set of mirrors to look back on, and I find the best thing about this, when you're looking back, you always get a nice clear vision of what's behind you. There's no vibration or anything run through the mirror, so everything's fine in that one. And more importantly, if you're on the Yamaha, which look more like motorcycle mirrors, they too give you a really good vision of behind you and they're nice and sharp to look through, so there's no trouble whatsoever. What I have noticed with both of these bikes, and they're both pathetic, so we'll say that, is this side stand. These would be the most Poor sample of a side stand I've ever seen on a bike. Look at them. No wonder the bloody thing fell over. So that's a Honda when it fell out on the road that day, but look at this. Look. Fairly disgusting. I, they ought to stick that side stand right where it doesn't belong. So we go over to the Yamaha. Not much difference. Look at this. Friggin' pathetic. Honda come with a Bluetooth type connector under here where you can connect music and that to your phone and a few other things but so far I've never tried it and the other thing is I've um, looked at a few reviews on this over the years or not over the years since it's been out but I haven't had one person or haven't viewed one person that's actually ever got this working. I mean there's a few of them said they've tried and couldn't get it working properly but so far I've never tried and there's no one ever put up anything on how to get it going. So, um, you know, it must be pretty good or everyone would be displaying it as a big top feature. But at this stage, to me, I think it's just something to uh, fill in time there. And 
Now before we give this Bluetooth connector the flick, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it doesn't serve a purpose. I'm pretty sure you could find something to do with it and you know that, that's totally up to you which way you want to go but I reckon I've found one. <laughs> and that, that um, to give you a bit of specs I'm roughly 5 foot 9, 32 inch inseam. I have no trouble sitting on either one of these. If anything on the um, Yamaha here it's got a little bit of a sort of a little bit more could be a tad more height in the seat or and it spreads your legs more when you're riding it so the first few times out on it you do get a bit uh, muscle stretch in the thighs but apart from that I can sit on either one of them virtually pretty close to flat foot and I don't have any trouble with either bike the seating's not too bad so uh, well, while I'm at it, I might even just mention switch gear. If you look at the Honda Forza switch gear, there's a heap of stuff around. These bikes have been out a while. We don't have to go through the controls. You know everything on here. All I'm saying, when you look at the Honda, if anything, it's fairly cluttered in the amount of controls there. Over this side here, especially if you want to go to the different modes to select different parts on it. You know, you've got to press A, B around the other side. A fair bit of crap on that one. If you look over on the Yamaha, they just got really good quality uh, controls there. Simple ones, just, you know, your start, uh, your kick over hazard lights, your trip area when you want to get into the computer. Back over here, just a simple one for your headlights, indicator, horn. Just really simple layout. And, uh, you know, like sitting on the Yamaha, it's a pretty nice place to be. So, uh, you know, like if you said, um, if you could only have one of these bikes, it's pretty hard choice because they both got good and bad points and they're both pretty good bikes so you know hard call. I suppose while I'm at it I'd better mention standard equipment so uh, standard equipment for safety side would be with these particular bikes both of them run traction control which is switchable you can either turn it on or turn it off and both have dual channel ABS which is not touchable and it's on all the time. Now I reckon the ABS, if anyone's out there buying a new bike scooter for the first time, my thoughts on ABS, you know, they're, I reckon they're really life savers. I've had the chance to go hard on the brakes a couple of times on different bikes with ABS and I'm glad I had them. In fact, one particular bike, a 390 Adventure KTM, I was actually had to go hard on the brakes in the corner once and it had steerable ABS. But I'd never seen a bike pull me down so quick and so safely and I could steer it around the corner. So, you know, anyone that sort of is against ABS and that will, those guys are old school and they should be on 1950, 1960 model bikes and, you know, that, that, that's where they belong. But, you know, we have to keep people alive in uh, 2021, not knock them over. And I think if you've got traction control, ABS, that is the way to go. Anyway, guys, that uh, does it for this bit of a review on this part of it. On our next clip, we're going to have a look at the under seat storage capacity on both bikes and I'm going to remove the plastics off the handlebars on either bike and we'll just show you how they look underneath because the Honda has got more of a scooter type um, front end setup and if you go to the Yamaha it's got more of a motorcycle one so it's fairly interesting to look at that one so we'll swing into that on the second one so once again thanks for tuning in taking a look and uh, we'll get into it and, uh, on, the, on the next clip and I'll just show you what's inside that section there as we work our way through various uh, events which are going to happen when I take this bike out, or both bikes out on it. But uh, either way, once again, they're both not bad bikes and in the end it all boils down to personal preference or how much money you got in your pocket to buy one and, or more importantly, whether either bike's available when you come to buy it. So, there's a lot of factors you have to bring into it to decide what you're actually getting and what you're not. So once again, cheers for now, catch you next time and all the best.